What is oil viscosity? What does it do in your engine? Can it make power and why? All of that, this time on Engine Masters. Our new sponsor is Driven Oil, and they're letting me do something I've always wanted to do, which is a test of various viscosities of oil. They said, you know, we're not sure what you're gonna find out on the dyno, but hey, let's go for it. So what we're gonna do is look at a couple of different viscosities, and we're gonna do horsepower, we're gonna do temperature over pressure, and we're gonna compare the two viscosities to see if there's a difference in temperature over pressure to sort of get an idea of the viscosity index, the viscosity index being the oil's ability to maintain its viscosity over a broad range of temperatures. All right, this can get kind of complicated, and so let's go over some oil basics. First of all, what is viscosity? It is a measurement of a fluid's resistance to flow. A higher number is thicker, a lower number is thinner. So therefore, a 520 oil is thinner than a 2050 oil. The thing you need to understand, which I didn't and a lot of people don't, is that the viscosity test for the high number, for example, the 50 in 2050, is handled completely differently than the W number, the low number, the winter number. Here's what that's all about. Let's say you got a 2050 oil. The 50 is measured at 212 degrees. And to simplify it, they basically put it in a test tube with a metered orifice and they time how long it takes to flow out of the tube. That's how it's measured. But on the W number, the lower number, the 20 in 2050, it's totally different. That is a measurement of resistance to spinning. They take sort of a vein and put it in a bath of oil and spin it, and the lighter the oil, the faster it spins. Therefore, they can sort of extrapolate the oil that will flow best at the coldest temperature, and they kind of then adjust that to rate for an SAE viscosity rating. It's fairly complicated. The main thing that you need to know is that the W rating, the 20, is there because oil manufacturers wanted to be able to have a thinner oil on cold startup so that it gets all through the engine as quickly as possible. Uh, they just didn't want to have wear and tear on startup. There's a whole lot of other stuff in oil that is tuned for your specific application. Next, let's talk about this GP1, which they recommend is like their ultimate hot rod oil. The GP1 is a semi-synthetic, and they admitted to me that, you know, the way the oil industry works, it can have a very, very low percentage of synthetic in it to be called a semi-synthetic. Apparently, the thing about the GP1 here is that it's good for hot rods because it has the potential to make power because of the additives in it, and it's really good for fuel contamination, like if you're running methanol, or if you're running E85, or if you, like us, run your gasoline car way too rich, and you get a bunch of fuel in the oil, they've got additives that prevent that fuel from breaking down the oil and causing it to be thinner. It will stay thicker longer with contaminants in it. In the hot rodding world, a big one is main bearing and rod bearing clearance. Let's say you've got three thousandths rod bearing clearance, which is fairly big, and you're doing that because you've got like a supercharged application. Another application could be really, really tight, like perhaps a new LS that is 1.8 thousandths, and the thing is you need a viscosity of oil that matches what that clearance is thinner for a tighter clearance, thicker for a bigger clearance. That's one of the main things, because you want to maintain what's called a hydrodynamic wedge, which is the lubrication that is between the crankshaft journal and the bearing to separate the two of them so they don't touch and so they don't shear the oil. Wow, 
That's a lot of stuff, and honestly, it's real basic because there's a lot more to it. Now, the two oils that we're gonna be testing here are a 5W20 and a 20W50. I wanna find out, does one make more horsepower than the other? But what's really interesting is looking at the different temperatures you can run at. Remember how the high end of the SAE rating is based on 212 degrees? We're gonna run these oils at 212 degrees, but we're also gonna run them down at 100 degrees. And what I wanna look at is how pressure and power changes when you have different temperatures. But the other thing to do is to compare the two oils to see if one of them diverges and has a bigger problem maintaining that viscosity index than the other one. So that's the oil test. What's the engine we're gonna use? Honestly, it's kind of a weak Chevy 454 big block. The bottom end is a Mercury Marine crate engine. It's got like seven and a half or eight to one, and that's the problem with it making big power. We're guessing that the camshaft in it, based on the power curve, probably has 224 duration at 50,000 tappet lift. It's probably a CompCam's XR276HR hydraulic roller. It's got the GM Performance cylinder heads on it, which were made by Edelbrock. And the intake manifold is an Edelbrock RPM air gap. Up top, we have a 750 Holley on there, and it's got a product that isn't available anymore, which is Percy's jet plate. So you can just turn a screw and adjust the jetting. So that's what the engine's all about. Now I'm gonna sit down with the Steves, and then we'll have a little bit of a discussion and start to make noise and see if there's really a difference between different viscosities of a really good quality oil. We don't even know what we don't know. Isn't We're that, gonna find out as we go. Isn't that normally the case? I guess so. This time more than ever, maybe. Oh, totally. Yeah, this kind of information just can't come by that easily. No. You know, this is one of those tests to me that sounds so easy, but the more you think about it and the more you figure out how to get it done, it becomes yeah. really complex. Well, that's gonna be on you because the big oh, thing is, well, it is, <laughs> yes. is gonna be the control of oil temperature and water temperature. Yeah. And the reason for that is the water temperature affects horsepower. And if we're trying to look at different horsepower between two oils, then we need the water temperature the same, but we also need the oil temperature the same. So that's gonna be hard, but you can do it. I think what we're gonna do is start with our thinnest oil, go to the thickest one. So the first one going in is going to be the 5W20 driven GP1. I'm in the control room here with Steve because we're keeping an eagle eye on these two fields right here, which is oil temperature and coolant out. We really need to keep that stuff repeatable, yeah. which is difficult. And so we're gonna kind of look at this first test and agree on where we should start pulling the engine uh, based on what we think we can duplicate with the other oils? Yeah, you know, it's not unusual at all when we're testing this stuff that we kind of figure out some of our test procedures during the first set of testing. That way we know that we can duplicate it through each of the tests and be accurate so we can compare back to back. So now what we're gonna do is heat up the oil by running it at about 3,500 RPM under a fairly big load. And then we'll try and cool the coolant temp back down and run it again. At 225, you'll see this frame turn red. There we go. Right, now we shut it down and wait for the coolant to cool and hopefully the oil stays fairly hot. As a reminder, this is with the Driven 520 oil, and I'm gonna start by giving you what's actually the least important data at this point, which is the horsepower and the torque. The torque is 541.4 at 3,500 RPM, and we made 468.8 horsepower at 6,000. But before we have another oil to compare that with, really, I think the story is in the oil pressure. Yeah, I think so too. Here's our oil pressure curve cold with a peak of 
66.9 PSI and a nice curve. We Beautiful got curve. no windage garbage or anything yeah. like that happening up at the top. If we have a windage problem, we often see the pressure just, you know, do this and then yeah. <laughs> up at the <laughs> top ugly. end. How about hot? Our peak with hot oil is 53 PSI. You can see that the hot oil has lower oil pressure everywhere because yeah. it gets thinner. And what's interesting is that hot oil is honestly where the spec is for the 50 weight because it's at 212 degrees, which is what we ran right. it at. Yes. So that's right at that number. The question is, does the hotter oil make more horsepower? So now we go back to the power curve and compare those two things. Pretty good. The black lines are the cold oil which was about 100 degrees, and then the red lines are 212 degrees, and you can see that the hotter oil makes a little bit more power, as we've seen time and again. It's no yeah. mystery. You know, ask any drag racer. It's hot oil, cold water, that's how it's gonna make the best power. Mm -hmm. With the hot oil, our peaks are higher. The torque is 544.7, also at 3,500 RPM, just like it was before, and the horsepower, 472.4 at 6,000 RPM, so yeah up a few numbers everywhere. The thing I'm really curious about though is what happens when we pour the thicker oil in, if we see any difference or, you know, trends that are not the same as far as how quickly it gets hot, what the difference is in pressure, all those things. I'm curious too, because I can't tell you how many times a drag racer will opt for a thinner oil mm -hmm. because he can't heat it up like we did. So instead of a, a standard oil that's got 212 degrees, he's gonna go to a zero or 10 weight oil at 100 degrees and it's gonna have the same sort of viscosity looking for that power. What's interesting is I was speaking to Bill at Driven Oil about exactly that. And he was working with the guys who run in the uh, NMRA where it's mm -hmm. Coyote stock. It's ostensibly a stock engine, they drag okay. race them. He said a bunch of the people were running that zero weight oil, yeah. but they were actually losing ring seal. And what they would do is they would pour in an additive that would make more power and they go, hey, I make more power. And he's like, well, you could have just run the thicker, thicker oil. oil to begin yeah. with. So it's not always about the thinnest oil to make the most power. It's not, it really is a combination. I mean, when you look at the higher levels in drag racing, comp eliminator, pro stock, those sorts of things, mm -hmm. the ring technology is way out there. I mean, they're like 1.2 millimeters. Pro stock stuff is even as thin as 28 thousandths. They're gas ported. You know, ring seal Hot has, on, yeah. yeah, they've really gone to a lot of extremes to get great ring seal. So they're able to get away with that. A regular stock eliminator car, mm -hmm. eh, not so sure that that's beneficial to start running uh, zero or 10 weight oil. Interesting, so the next test is gonna be with thicker oil and I hope that we can derive things about whether the thicker oil is hotter at the same coolant temp than this is because that's what the theory is but that's not what your real world experience well, shows. My, going back to what you said before, one of my fears is running a really thin oil under a high load situation, mm -hmm. like a lot of power, a lot of pressure on that contact interface can you know, squish that really thin oil out, especially yeah. when it's very hot. The hydrodynamic wedge, that's why you want a thicker oil with a larger uh, bearing clearance. journal clearance, and sure. also why guys with superchargers tend to run heavier viscosity, yeah. so you're not displacing the, the ultimate oil. example there would be a top fuel motor. 70 weight straight is what they run in top fuel engines. But I'm gonna be curious, when we put the heavier weight oil, in the engine, I mean, how much of a penalty are we really talking about in power, if any? Well, so. you can go burn your hands and drain it out, and I'll go ahead and pour the new stuff in. And then I'll find out. Let's change the filter, too, that makes sense. I'll take a nap. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, changing oil for power and pressure. Here's our cold oil run, just to observe, it looks like the oil went from 100 degrees to about 119 on that pull. Now our chore is to get the oil up above 212, like 225 degrees, shut it off, 
and cool the coolant back down to 125. There's 225. Or 225. Yeah, yeah. It took longer and it took a hotter coolant temperature to get there. This will be interesting. Let's go sit down with Dulcich and discuss. First up, we've got the 2050 cold. The peak numbers here are 539.2 pound-feet of torque and 464.4 horsepower. But now we're going to overlay it with the same oil run at a higher temperature. And after looking at the last test with the thinner oil, this shouldn't surprise you too much. Sure enough, the hot oil makes more power to the tune of 548.5 pound-feet of torque and 478.5 horsepower. That's big. That's a huge That's a difference. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it a lot. Now what we're looking at is oil pressure, cold versus hot with the 2050. So the peak oil pressure when it was cold was 73 PSI, and the peak when it was hot was 60 PSI. Once again, the hotter oil gets thinner. Thinner, sure. Right, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's not 50 weight when it's hot. <laughs> that's the thing that I think is sort of a mind boggler. We ran it at 212 degrees. That's where oil is rated, so that's where it's a 50 weight. Not out of the bottle, not, no, not, not cold out of the bottle. viscosity, I got you. Right, okay. poor viscosity is different. No. Yes, How does no. that compare to the thin oil is what I'd like to know. Uh, let's have a look. And what we're looking for here is to see if the viscosity index is different between the two oils. The black lines are 2050 cold. The red lines are 2050 hot. The green lines are 520 cold, and the blue lines are 520 hot. And it looks to me like the gap is about pretty, the same. Pretty similar. Yeah, I remember it was 14 and change pressure differential on the thin oil and 13 and a tiny bit on the thick oil. So. And of course, the reason that the thinner oil's lower pressure is just because it's, it's thinner, thinner to begin with. Sure. Yeah. yeah. All right, so I don't think that's very instructive. That's not really teaching us that there's any big breakdown based on temperature between these two oils. No, it's just kind of what, what you would expect as things heat up. Thinner is yeah. going to have less pressure, thicker is going to have more. And the thin oil versus the thick oil didn't do anything differently. No. That's what we're deriving from that. The last thing that we should look at is the temperature gain between the two, which I'm going to assume is going to be the same because the pressure was the same. Right. That would follow, yeah. Our next graph is showing us if one of the oils gets hotter during a dyno pull than the other. And by the way, the scale here from here to here is one degree. Yeah. So it might look drastic, but it's not. It's one degree. The red line is the 520, the thinner oil. The black line is the 2050, the thicker oil. And basically, wherever it starts dictates where it finishes. Yeah. That's what this gap is. It's, and it kind of train tracks. It's the, the spread is the same basically throughout the run. It's one or two degrees difference throughout. Yeah. I so don't it's see any same. significant change or variation on how fast it's yeah. heating up. Not at all. And maybe we're just dealing in a range where both of these have a viscosity index good enough that they just don't care. We don't know. There's a lot of data here, more than I thought we really had initially. And, you know, not a surprise. We always learn more as we go. But there's a lot to sift through here as there far is. as what's happening and what's going on and why. But wait, the most interesting thing is coming up right now. All the rest of this is just stuff that doesn't affect your life. The next one makes Dulcich and I really, really happy. <laughs> Ta -da. And there's the Mythbuster that is going to change your world. The red lines that made more power are the thicker oil. That's the 2050. The thinner oil made less power. <laughs> Right. Because most people think you pour in really thin oil because then there's less resistance to pumping, there's less windage loss, you know, less and, frictional and loss, all that stuff. All of those things are correct. 
But that's not the story. It is overcome by the fact that the thicker oil contributes more to ring seal. All right, let's conclude. I think the first thing I've got to do is walk back my enthusiasm for the 2050 because honestly, the whole ring seal theory and the more power with the thicker oil is unusual at best. Like the guy at Driven told me, thinner oil will always make more power up to the point of it compromising ring seal. Yeah. And yeah. we've seen that in plenty of testing. Thinner oil makes more power. Yeah, over and over again. This engine may be a little bit unusual. You know, it's got wider rings, mm -hmm. a ton of laps on it. Um, and in this case, maybe this is a bit unusual just because it did help ring seal. That's the only explanation for that divergence in the curve. It still opens up a subject I had never considered. I didn't know that that oil could yeah. contribute to ring seal. And by a pretty dramatic margin when you look at the horsepower gain up at the top. Yeah. So that's my big takeaway from the episode is that it has that potential, but it doesn't mean it's gonna happen every time. As a matter of fact, it's probably gonna happen in rare occasions. Uh, the other thing I think we have to admit here is that through all our struggle to look at temperature over pressure and viscosity index and everything else, I think honestly the dyno doesn't have the capability to push the oil to the point where we can really conclude on that. Oil testing becomes a huge volume of information. I mean, this is only just a piece of it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at the lab testing, um, you know, we've done oil testing in the past where it goes to the lab, it goes to the dyno, it goes to the race team, and then makes that circle two or three or four times before they actually settle on a blend that everyone is yeah. happy with. So yep. it, it goes on and on. There's a lot of depth to it. So I think more talking and thinking than hard data here an unusual result with the power. I learn something every time, and this was one of them, ring seal from oil. Once again. Yep. Maybe we can dig up more freakish power gains. That's kind of what we do on future episodes of Engine, Engine Masters. Masters.